FSU fans are getting really greedy on the recruiting trail right now, but it's for good reason. The Seminoles are on fire in the 2024 class, and most teams in the country are not even doing close to what the Seminoles are doing. But the fireworks are not done just yet. FSU is very close to getting some more good news on the trail, and it's going to happen during this 2023 football season. Before we go on, comment below right now with the recruit that you are most excited about Florida State potentially landing. Not somebody that's already in the class, not Luke, not KJ, not Lester, not Cam. Who are you most excited about Florida State potentially landing in the rest of this recruiting cycle? All right, let's jump into some of these targets that Florida State's going after. Big time, big time names. We'll start right at the top. Jamari Howard. He's a four-star cornerback out of Miami. He is considering probably Florida State, Florida, uh, Michigan State. Miami might be in there a little bit. Took a visit to Rutgers. But right now, I think Florida State leads for his services. He's spoken with Zach Blostein of Knowles 247. I've also been told... Behind the scenes, Florida State's doing an extremely good job here with Howard, and I think that they probably will do a pretty good job of potentially landing his services. There's a long way to go, and Howard's a kid that said he's going to take it all the way to December, but I really like where they stand. Obviously, DB recruiting is something the Knowles are doing a phenomenal, phenomenal job of right now, and they'll do even better if they're able to land a top 70 Top 100 kid on most sites. Four-star cornerback out of Hylia, Florida, Jamari Howard. Next up, Artavius Jones. He is currently committed to the Miami Hurricanes. And Miami is in a little bit of a rough spot right now. Their defensive line recruiting has not been very good. And it looks like they may take another blow at the hands of the Seminoles. I really like how Florida State is recruiting Jones right now. It's from the panhandle, again, a four-star defensive tackle that I think the Knowles know is going to come in and make a big impact for them if they can land his services. I like the way that they're playing this. I think that they will end up doing a lot of good work during the season. I think they'll get Jones on campus multiple times. And at this moment, I think they've got just as good of a chance to land him as Miami does, who currently holds his commitment um, maybe even better. I might like the Knowles chances to land him even slightly better than the team he's currently committed to. I'd look for Jones. I'd watch out for when he's visiting, but I'd look for Jones to maybe make a decision even before signing day to flip to the good guys. Now, Miami is probably going to go all in here. They've lost on some other guys. They've missed on some other targets. It wouldn't shock me if they do anything and everything they can to keep him as part of their D-line class but I just don't know that it'll be enough. I think that Odell ends up winning out here, and I think the Knowles get a massive flip from their biggest conference rival, the Miami Hurricanes. Next up, I think this is a big one that you guys will be very interested in. Zaquan Patterson should be committing this Saturday. He's told Zach Blostein of Knowles 247 that he will be announcing his decision on Saturday. This is a Florida State, Michigan, Miami, Auburn battle. And a lot of confidence seems to be pouring in on the Knowles. And there is maybe a caveat with this. It sounds like his high school coach there at Shamanad Madonna wants all of the players to be committed to wherever they're going before their season starts or as their season is starting so that they can just focus on the season. They're obviously a, a high school powerhouse and they'd like to focus on the season as much as they possibly can. And so what Patterson has said and what a lot of people have alluded to is he's going to commit, but he's still going to be pretty open. He wants to take his visits. He wants to enjoy the process. And so maybe it's not the most solid commitment. Maybe it is. Maybe he commits to the Knowles and never looks back. But don't be surprised to see him take visits later. Don't be surprised to see him on different campuses. I like what the Knowles have done here. I think they've done a phenomenal job in this recruitment from by recruiting quietly. You don't always have to recruit and be the loudest mouth in the in the uh, in the space. I think that they've done a good job and the work they've done here is going to put them in good position. A lot of folks are very confident that the Knowles end up landing Patterson's recruitment on Saturday. Again, we talked about DB recruiting with Jamari Howard and this would be another one that would just put a huge feather in the cap of not only Pat Sertain, but our NIL efforts that we'll talk about in just a moment. 
Jason Zandamel is the next one that I want to look at. He is a four-star offensive lineman out of Clearwater, Florida, currently committed to USC. I think, like we talked about, Artavius Jones, most places are going to do everything they can to prevent a flip, right? It's easier to play defense. And you look back at Patterson, I think the Knowles would rather have him commit now and be potentially open than commit somewhere else and then be open. I think you want to play defense. It's always easier to keep a commitment than it is to flip a commitment. I think USC will go all out to try and keep Zandamela. Florida State's already flipped Samuel IT, um, sorry, Manisi ITT. I think that you... If you're USC, you you can't afford to lose another interior offensive lineman back to Florida State. But Zandamella being out of Clearwater, I think he'll be on campus a couple of times this year. If Florida State gets him on campus, I expect Florida State to pull off the flip here. I know that flips are kind of rare. I mean, as much as big of a deal as we make about flips, I, I think that uh, though we have three or four of them in this video. I think that most kids once committed, stay committed. I also just think that Florida State's doing ridiculous things on the recruiting trail right now, and that gives me a little bit more hope that they'll be able to pull him. If Zandamella makes it to campus, if he's there for any games this year, I like the Knowles' chances to end up getting a flip here and adding to an already really impressive you know, top two or three offensive line haul in the country. Here's another one from just right down the road from where I am, Booker Pickett. His high school, I literally passed it yesterday on the way to the store. Wharton High School, just right down the road. He is a four-star defensive line. Um, needs to fill out a little bit. Definitely needs to get a little bit bigger. He's pretty lean, pretty trim. But I think this is a Florida State, Miami, Ohio State battle. I think there's a lot of big dogs in this, and so talented, talented kid. And you know, needing to thin out or needing to fill out a little bit doesn't mean that he's not talented. And so I think that this is a really big one. The Knowles are attacking here. Interested to see how this recruitment shapes up in the fall, where he visits, where he goes, what that process looks like. But I know he's a kid that I think the the Knowles really like. Defensive line recruiting can can use more. Um, Umph maybe is, is the right word. And so I think this is a kid that they are targeting. Could certainly uh, end up in FSU's class. In fact, if I had to pick anywhere right now that he ends up, it would be FSU. But we'll see how things go. His recruitment could be very dependent on the next guy that we'll talk about. The next guy that we'll talk about is somebody that the Gators feel really, really, really good about. And it would be even sweeter if we could take this guy from them but before we talk about him, I do want to show some love to my buddy, Alex Knapp. I've told you guys about him, diehard Seminoles fan, just like you and I. He owns Knapp Accident and Injury. It's a law firm that specializes in car accidents, Uber and Lyft accidents, personal injury, and more. Listen, if you've been hurt in any kind of an accident, you may not need him today. But if you do, let my guy take care of you. If you have questions, Alex takes care of each and every one of his clients on a personal basis. You get his personal cell phone. You, you are not going to speak with some case manager or paralegal. His number is on the screen right now, 813-568-3724. Listen, I know it's not the most sexy thing. I know you're here to listen to college football advice or recruiting news or whatever, let Alex take care of you if you're hurt, injured, or know somebody that has been. He's going to be out with us at the LSU game, so come by. Let him buy you a drink, and hopefully you never need his services. But if you do, he will absolutely get you taken care of. We're going to do some giveaways with him this year that I'm really, really excited about, so stay tuned for those as well. All right, our next guy that we're talking about, we talked about Booker Pickett. His recruitment, again, could be somewhat depending on this next one. And this is a guy that I think the Gators feel really, really good about. It's LJ McCray out of Daytona Beach, Florida. Listen, this is a top 100, top 150 kid based on which site you're looking at. Four-star defensive line out of Daytona Beach, Florida. I have long thought that he was a Gator lean. I've long thought that the Gators would end up picking up his services. But seems like the smoke around Florida State is rising more and more and more as we get closer to the season and as we get closer to his official visit, which is going to be in October. And I think if the Knowles go into that official visit at 4-0, coming off wins against LSU, Clemson, they are going to be almost unbeatable on the trail at that point when they're going head-to-head -head with just about anybody. I like LJ McCray a lot. I think he would be a massive get for the Knowles. A lot of people have already kind of written him out of this class, thinking that Florida led by so much. But if the Knowles can get back in here, that would be huge for them. This kid is a true 
difference maker. I think he would play early. I don't I'm not saying he'd be a day one guy or anything like that, but I think he would play early. I think he'd play in his freshman year. I think that his size and his athleticism are something that you really, really look at as being the next level. Um, ultimately, I think if Georgia has space for him, he probably ends up playing for Kirby Smart. Uh, but there's some questions around whether or not they will take him or not based on their class filling up. If not, I've long thought this was Florida, but people that I speak with, people that I'm chatting with right now are saying that Florida State is getting back in the picture more and more. We'll see if they're able to get all the way back in the picture or what the situation is there. But LJ McCray certainly one to keep your eye on, taking an October official visit to Tallahassee. Michael Boganowski is one that's really, really interesting. He's a linebacker, a four-star, and, and I know our linebacker recruiting is something that fans have complained about somewhat recently. Listen, he is, to me, a, a Kansas State lean or, or one of those Big 12 or former Big 12 schools, and Oklahoma's in there as well. But I, that's where I, my vibe is. That's where I would project him at this point. But he's talked about making it back to campus for a game this fall. I think that what Florida State's doing in a, in a recruiting sense and just a culture aspect, NIL, all kind of pieces put together, I think Boganowski could be a kid that Florida State is able to secure and land if they can get him back to campus. They got to get him back. They got to get him there around the other guys. They got to get him back around the staff. But I think this is your most likely four-star linebacker that you could end up pulling. JoJo Trader, 6'1", 175 pounds, a five-star wide receiver, part of the best wide receiver duo in high school football. Again, currently committed to Miami. We're talking about another flip here. This is not something that I think is a done deal, a sure thing, uh, whatever, from Miami's perspective or Florida State's perspective. I think this kid is truly open. I have some doubts about whether or not he ends up in Miami signing class or not. I think there are several factors or different indicators that could impact that but I do think that Jojo Trader is somebody that the Knolls are still heavily heavily targeting it sounds like he's going to be at the Florida State Miami game in November I think that's really good for the Knolls because I think the Knolls are going to play really well in that game and have a good showing I also think that it sounds like he is going to potentially be at that LSU game to open the year in Orlando I've had several people talk to me about that I don't have it on 100% confirmation just yet but if I had to guess today, I would expect him and another recruit that we'll talk about here in just a moment to be at that game. JoJo Trader's an elite talent, uh, five-star on more than one side. I think this kid is really special, and I think the Knowles are going to continue to push. I don't believe his commitment to Miami is very solid right now. That doesn't mean that he doesn't end up signing there. I just don't think that the commitment as, is as solid as Miami would probably like. We'll see what happens long term. I know he's got some relationships. I know there's some concerns about family members' health. Uh, health. I think there are other factors in play, but I don't think that's a very strong commitment at this moment. We'll see how it turns out later. And then we did. We we buried the lead here. We saved the absolute biggest and best for last. But his teammate, Jeremiah Smith, number one wide receiver in the country. He's the number one player according to the on three industry rankings. He's number two everywhere else. He is the most phenomenal talent, I think, in this class. I think there's a little bit of weight given right now to a quarterback. Um, but as far as athleticism and talent and ability, I, it's Jeremiah Smith this year. Basically, number one player in the country. Um, 6'3", 198 pounds, out of South Florida. Goes to Shamanda Manana. He's a Nade boy. I, I think that Florida State is doing a good job of running second here. Uh, we talked about him on Sunday in our last show. Uh, I think that Ohio State leads. I think that they lead well. I think they're doing a good job in that recruitment. But if there's anybody that's doing as good of a job or close to as good of a job as Ohio State, to me, it's FSU right now. I think the Knowles are doing a great job here with Jeremiah. And if he was to decommit, if he was to pull his pledge from Ohio State, I think he would end up with the Knowles. Now, there's a long way to go, and I think the Knowles are set up extremely well. I think if you can get him to that LSU game in Orlando to start the season, you'd really, really like that. If you can get him to then come back for the Florida State-Miami game, come up with JoJo Trader, and then also use his official visit, which the Knowles have not used just yet. If you can get him to be on campus two more times, plus the Orlando game, I think you've got a shot. Is it a great shot? Are you neck and neck with Ohio State? Are you absolutely flipping them? I'm not saying any of that. But if you can take care of your business, win a lot of games, win 10, 11 games, 
put on a good show when he's there in person, treat him like a, the number one player in the country, I think you've got a chance. Does Ohio State probably still have a better chance? I would guess so. But I think the Knowles have a really, really good shot to probably get into second here, solidify that second place. And then if, if Ohio State falters at all, or there's any kind of coaching change or turnover or anything like that, or if the Knowles just do a good job and flip the kid, I think that you're putting yourself in a really, really good spot to land a super talented athlete. Now, FSU is probably not going to take all these guys. They can probably take a good number at this point, but some, like we mentioned, might be dependent on what others do, what happens, how the class fills up, who commits first, who is available. I know there are certain guys that they would absolutely make space for. You're not turning away a Jeremiah Smith. You're not turning away a Jamari Howard, a Zaquan Patterson, an LJ McCray, a JoJo Trader. There are other guys that I think they really, really want and other guys they have committed, but you, you can always figure numbers out later. That, that, to me, that's not a huge problem. I don't see them getting all nine, not trying to project that at, by any means. I think these are the guys that they're closest to right now and maybe have a good chance of, of doing some work with, whether they be flips or elsewhere. The possibility of a top three class definitely exists. FSU fans, like we said in the beginning, are getting greedy with this class, which they have every right to do. Coming into this year, the expectation was a top 10 class for Mike Norvell. We needed to see a top 10 class out of Mike Norvell to really buy in and really believe that he could do it at the high school level. And a lot of the complaint, a lot of the talk was, hey, you can do a lot in the portal. You're doing a good job of coaching guys up. You're doing a good job of turning the roster around, culture flipping, everything else. But can you recruit at this high school level? And Mike Norvell seems to be doing a really, really good job of that this cycle and it looks like a top five class is really likely for the Knowles. As always, make sure that you're signed up for the Battle's End. This is not an official plug. This, if you like the recruiting results that we're getting right now, make sure that you're supporting in whatever fashion you can. If you can do $20 a month, if you can do more, great. Go do that. Go support our NIL efforts because they are absolutely kicking tail and they need it right now from you. They're doing amazing work. And the haters and the doubters have a lot to say about what's going on with FSU's NIL. But those folks are missing something huge. To learn about that, you can click right here.